good evening everyone a warm welcome to everybody to the earning call of gtpl hathway to discuss financial performance of quarter 2 fy24 as one of the largest mso and broadband player in this country it pleases me to see us going from strength to strength we have added 800k subscriber in digital cable tv business and 120k subscriber in broadband business year to year and look forward to maintain our growth the main strategy is to consolidate the industry and enhance customer experience through layering of services i will now hand over to the call to mr pius pankaj who will take you through the quarterly business and financial performance of the company pius thank you mr jadeja good evening everyone the company has recorded its highest ever quarterly revenues beating the previous quarter and is well on track to be the highest revenue crossing financial year our kpis have also increased both on a quarterly and yearly basis first i will talk on the digital cable tv business active subscriber base as on 30th september 2023 stands at 9.4 million increasing by 350k qoq and 800k yoi paying subscribers stand at 8.70 million paying subscribers increased by 400k qoq and 700k yoi in the broadband business we have added 120k new subscribers an increase of 14% on a yoi basis to reach 990k home path subscribers stood at 5.55 million as on 30th september 2023 of which 75% are available for fctx conversion home path grew by 550k on yoi basis and 150k on a qoq basis the broadband arcu for quarter 2 fy24 stood at rupees 460 and increased up rupees 10 on a yoi basis and a stable on quarterly basis the average data consumption per customer per month stood at 310 gb a 25% increase yoi this quarter we announced mr kartik aryan and mrs ms rashmika mandana as the new brand ambassadors of our company they will be part of new, our new ad campaign the ab ke zamane ka connection to highlight the variety of services that we are well equipped to provide on a consolidated level revenue grew by 19% yoi to rupees 7900 million the digital cable tv subscription revenue stood at rupees 3226 million up by 17% yoi and 8% qoq the broadband revenue stood at rupees 1317 million an increase of 10% yoi and 2% qoq the consolidated ebitda stood at rupees 1351 million with an ebitda margin of 17.1 17.1% profit after tax for quarter 2 fy24 stood at rupees 344 million the stand alone revenue stood at rupees 5121 million an increase of 21% yoi ebitda stood at rupees 765 million with an ebitda margin of 14.9% pat for quarter 2 fy24 stood at rupees 243 million the net debt to equity continues to remain negligible as the company remains conscious of its capex and leveraging efforts this is all from my side thank you everyone we can now begin with question and answer session thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handset while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment for the while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of vinit mahik from karma capital advisor advisor please go ahead yeah uh, hello mr piyush uh, hi mr jadeja uh, thank you for this opportunity 
can you hear me yeah 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 we need go ahead hi we need so our first question uh, is on the side of the margins uh, so we had marked an improvement in the margins from q1 to q4 but still we committed to stay on the 20% uh, ebitda margin by the end of q4 so can you help us understand that how do you plan to achieve this 20% margin journey by q4 uh, with our expenses which are increasing at a faster rate versus the revenue growth so can you help us understand that yeah we need uh, actually if you see we have improved our 100 basis points this quarter from 16.1% we have gone up to 17.1% in the ebitda margin and uh, as uh, as as you see that the npo 3 implementation has happened and because of that uh, quarter 2 is still showing a higher side of the cost which is stabilized now so we have increased our revenue and we have increased the cost also uh, so now the cost is stabilized so we are looking forward that uh, 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 some year the ebitda margin is again going to improve last year we were at 30% that we are going to achieve by quarter 4 and uh, the new projects are also on the annual which i can't disclose here but yeah, we are confident that uh, With those new projects coming into the fold uh, of GDPL, our margin is uh, going again back to the 20 percent. As whatever hit we have to take for the IPO three and all, it's already happened in quarter one and quarter two. Okay, so on the pay channel cost, uh, the 434 crores that we reported this quarter, uh, you expect that expense to be at a steady rate versus the revenue growth going forward. Yes. So, if you say the increase in the pay channel cost is uh, not going to happen on that day, then the increase in the uh, revenue is going to happen in the higher pace because revenues are still getting realized, cost is already stabilized. Okay. And and how should we look at the other expenses, which is 182 crores for the quarter? So, you do expect the similar growth rate going forward in the following quarters, or? Do you expect that to decelerate? The other expenses are going to be on the normal rate now. Uh, as you see, uh, as you see, uh, other operating admin and saving expense, uh, which has uh, gone up by four percent quarter to quarter, and if I talk about the actual to actual, it has gone up to by around nineteen percent. But one eighty two crore, which we are seeing right now, already considered. Uh, uh, the whatever increase we have to do uh, so uh, as uh, whatever the expansion we have to do in the north and all which is we have to take that has already taken in quarter 4 and quarter 1 and quarter 2 all the cost so we are not seeing that it is going to go up much and it will be on the normal rate okay okay and uh, my second question comes to the broadband segment uh, so Even on the broadband segment, our growth rate has uh, now coming down to a 10% kind of a growth versus in the previous year and few quarters where we were growing upwards of 15 to 20%. So, uh, how are you looking growth over there? And has the B2C component of the subscribers that uh, we were adding it on an inorganic basis, uh, has that come in or it is yet to come in for us? No, B2C is coming in still. B2B as uh, last quarter we have added uh, good numbers. This quarter B2B is a bit down uh, as uh, uh, some of the technical problems and all we have faced on some of the record. So B2C, whatever the numbers you are seeing that 30k we have increased in the quarter, around 25k is uh, uh, 25k is uh, around B2C. So we have increased. We have increased from 960 to 990k. We have gone. That's 30k increase in the quarter. Out of that, 25k is the B2C right now. 5k is just the B2B in that. Okay, so the B2B revenue is yet to come in the coming quarters. That's right. That's right. Okay, and and should we expect that growth rate coming back to 15% kind of a growth rate? Yeah, by the way, we are looking forward. We are down to 10% right now. Uh, why? Why we are looking forward that it should come back to 15% again? Okay. 
Okay. And and just one last question from my side. So, uh, even on the depreciation side, uh, we had seen a slight acceleration versus the previous quarter run rate during this quarter, which is 820 crores. So, uh, any one-off uh, in that or this is the steady state number that uh, will be there going forward? Uh, as we consolidated metro cost, so that's why you have seen uh, some increase in the uh, uh, depreciation over there. Uh, so we have added the assets of uh, Metrocast in our uh, case, where the Metrocast has some higher asset side. So that comes to the depreciation also, their depreciation. Okay, so this that's is the statistic right. number that will go forward. Yeah, that's the, this is a stable number, I will say, which is uh, going to be there. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you very much for taking our questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Urvisha from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. The participant has left, uh, left the queue. The next question from the line of Rahul Chain from Individual Investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so with the World Cup going on, we may expect higher marketing incentive. So can you help me understand the typical structure between the advertisers say Pepsi, uh, the channel for an example Star Sports and a broadcaster such as Arsis? Uh, Raul, Raul, uh, we didn't get the question, sorry. Hi, hi Raul, how are you? Uh, can you repeat uh, the question, Rahul? Hello, am I audible? Yeah, 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 audible, audible. Can you repeat the question? That uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying uh, we may expect higher margin marketing incentive during the World Cup, as in World Cup is going on. Mm -hmm. So can you help me understand the typical structure between an advertiser, say Pepsi, and the channel, for example, Star Sports and the broadcaster such as ourselves? Uh, Rahul, no, we don't get the margins on the advertisement side. Advertisement is fully for the broadcaster. Yes, we get the enhancement in our subscriber base. Because of that, I'm seeing that uh, right now I'm looking, I'm seeing that around uh, 1 lakh 20,000 customers has come back within the first week of October. From, you can say, from 4th October to the date. And uh, more are coming back on that. So I'm seeing the surge in our subscriber base, especially the subscriber base who has, uh, who has already have the boxes and all in their homes and they have stopped the services, they are coming back. So that surge I have seen within a week's time, we got around more than 1 lakh 20,000 subscriber base back in our port. Uh, okay. Okay. So my second question is, okay. So my second question is like, uh, do we have some leverage for the placement or marketing incentive when it comes to our 50 plus channel that we own and operate? Um, you are talking about leverage on what? Uh, on the World Cup? Or you are talking about in general leverage? In general leverage. In general, yes. Uh, if the uh, number of channels are uh, higher, then uh, we get uh, more incentives on those from the broadcast because they have to put all 50 channels together. They have to uh, put that, we should put them in our packages also and all. So that is, that is the case. So we get more incentive if their uh, number of channels are higher. Okay. Uh, so like uh, I understand that the full effect of NTO means that pay channel cost and placement revenue are higher on a year on year basis. But uh, can you explain their performance on a quarter on quarter basis? Uh, we have just two quarters, so we have started implementing on uh, quarter one somewhere from the mid of the April, and uh, by this quarter the whole market has got stabilized. So whatever increase has to happen, as the P-channel side has already happened, and uh, uh, now we are at a stable stage uh, from quarter three onwards, where the uh, Cost side is at least uh, totally stable now. Okay, okay. 
thank you for thank you for this thanks thanks sir thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and want to ask a question the next question is from the line of urvisha from dollar capital please go ahead can you hear me yes yeah good afternoon apologies uh, i got disconnected earlier uh, so to provide a quick question uh, we can see that there is higher increase in depreciation and interest on gop basis so uh, what is the reason for that hi we uh yeah the reason is that uh, we have consolidated metro cars in this quarter and uh, their depreciations and uh, their discounted salary also came into our books and because of that you are seeing that around uh, from 173 has gone to 182 uh, from 73 74 crores it has gone up to 82 crores that is an increase of 8 crores uh, happened around 11 percent of the increase because of that oh thank you okay. thank you the next question is from the line of rahil shah from crown capital please go ahead hello am i audible yeah rahil yes 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 hi sir uh, good afternoon um this arpo which has stayed flattish you know quarter on quarter basis so what is the outlook on that i mean do you see this increasing you are talking about broadband business yes yes broadband yes yeah. um uh, no i i explained in earlier calls also rahul uh, rahul that uh, uh, uh the broadband we are looking for more for the value gain volume gain rather than the value gain Volume in the sensitive uh, market, the ARPU range will be between 400 to 460, and this mm-hmm. is also what you are saying that we have gone up from somewhere 450 to 460. And last two years, if you see our trend from 400 to 460, that is only because that uh, people are going for the higher packages. That uh, we are going from 50 Mbps packages to 80 Mbps to 100 Mbps, where the prices right. are high. so that is that is the way we we still consider if you ask me that uh, broadband business is more of a startup business out of 315 million homes only 35 million homes are there in wired broadband so still a long way to go and uh, it's going to be a more of a uh, volume game like the telecom uh, rather than the value game right now okay so headroom is huge and you you see in near term a uh, good traction for that Yeah, yeah. Yes, so, but the traction will is going to increase because, uh, uh, as you know, the, all the focus is there in the uh, digital India, the broadband. Uh, government is uh, pushing it. Everyone is pushing it. Everyone is going for the digital, and more and more as the more consistency we are going to require, as more financial transactions are going to happen through those, then uh, why broadband is the one of the most most consistent uh, provider and most consistent uh, you can say giving the bandwidth and everything so and it's a proven technology after it is a worldwide proven technology so mm-hmm. we are hopeful that uh, why broadband is going to grow uh, as uh, as it has grown in uh, other markets if we talk about uh, us already penetration is more than 70% if you talk about euro zone it is already more than 60% china 55% So already those markets have already gone up. So we are looking forward to India will also come close to 50% at least in wide broadband. So based on your knowledge about the industry, by when do you expect India reaching that stage in general? Yeah, we are looking forward that uh, half a decade, five years. Uh, okay. Okay. That should be there in the. And years. then and we, we'll be we'll be more than ready to capture a good market share. Yeah. Yeah. So 50%. Uh, Uh, penetration that is good to be somewhere one to three million households for the uh, wired broadband. Right, right, okay. And lastly, on you said the pay channel cost increase will not happen at the same rate as the revenue growth, correct? So, what kind of uh, what are your expectations about the full year then uh, in terms of revenues? You've seen a good growth in quarter two. So, is this sustainable quarter on quarter? Uh, any any outlook there? 
as i talked about that uh, we are already wired to why 17% increase is already happening in the third quarter there i'm looking forward that uh, if you see my trend uh, from last five years to here we have uh, the cgr of uh, subscription revenue is between 18% to 21% that's that's what we are going to maintain in this year also already we have 17% so we are going forward also we have seen that it will be be somewhere 18 to 21% of the subscription revenue Yes, the channel is now stabilized, so we are looking forward that uh, as revenue will grow and uh, the cost will be stabilized, main cost, so that we will see that the margin will improve. And uh, from 17% margin right now, we are going to go up and again on the normalized margin of 20%. That's what we are trying to achieve. Perfect, perfect. Okay. And this uh, GDP and Gini, uh, how, how is that doing? GDP Gini is uh, doing good. Uh, initial days, I will say, because still uh, the product is new for the subscriber. Around 90k subscribers has come, mainly more into the more towards the broadband. Cable uh, is lesser. Uh, but yes, uh, right now we are uh, rejigging the whole. Uh, 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 you can say the offers and uh, by. Quarter three or in the quarter three, we are going to relaunch Gini uh, in the new order. So that's that's the plan right now. But yes, uh, this Gini has, uh, I think, it's a good traction, 90k now. Uh, but we are seeing that uh, the slowness is coming over there at that point of time. So it's required a rejig, which we are going to do in this quarter. Okay, perfect, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saloni Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, I have a few questions specific to the different revenue items. Uh, the first one being revenue based from activation. So we have seen an increase in active and paying subscribers. Yet the activation revenue is lower if we see the Y on Y and Q on Q basis. So I think if you can just throw some light on how the subscriber base has moved on gross basis, addition of new subscribers, metro car subscribers, and churn rather than the net basis. Yeah. So activation revenue is uh, is more of uh, what you are recovering at the time of uh, putting the boxes in the subscriber zone, which is called activation of the boxes. What revenue you are getting it? Yes, activation revenue was very high in the past, and uh, it is getting deferred according to the accounting uh, 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 standard. It is getting deferred for five years. So it's a deferred revenue which is coming back to our books. The realization of the money has already happened in the past. So, uh, see, this this revenue is continuing at the time when the digital DAS DAS as you know. The digitization of whole industry was happening, and the whole boxes are getting placed in the customer zone. That was happening, and at that point of time, you are giving the boxes in bulk. It's like uh, uh, because every customer, the new boxes has to go into their household, and you are collecting the activation income from them as you are putting the assets in their household, and those are uh, getting deferred for five years according to the index, and those revenues are coming back. So right now, India, I will say the activation revenue is uh, very less because uh, uh, whenever you are giving the box, activation is uh, a normal course of business now, rather than a special course of business at the time of uh, DAS implementation when you are doing the whole digitization of the industry. So that is that is the, uh, that's why you are seeing there is a decline, and we are looking forward that activation revenue will be. Uh, in the range of negligible in the whole whole uh, uh, you can say the whole PNL, and uh, you can see that in the quarter two also it's hard to four crores which is there. It will remain in the same range three to four crores uh, every quarter, not more than that. Uh, 
Okay, sir. Okay, My next question yeah. being, uh, what is the increase in the subscribe uh, subscription income from cable TV attributable to? As in, like, what portion of it is NTR effect, and how much is the natural growth? Most of it is NTR. Yes, uh, if you talk about subscription income, uh, right now eight percent growth has happened uh, on there. The quarter one and uh, quarter two, if we talk about, uh, uh, there is an increase in the numbers of around 400k, which is uh, mainly because of uh, metro cars, you can say. So somewhere in this. Uh, uh, around metro cars has contributed of around uh, 18 crores. Rest is uh, the anti three. If you talk about H1 to H1. Okay, sir. And sir, my last question is, uh, I think our in other income is uh, mostly attributable to EPC work that we do. So do we have any EPC contract expected to win? And also if uh, it's there. What is the tenure left on the existing EPC contract? So right now we are we don't have any EPC. We have the ONM operation and maintenance of uh, what EPC project we did. And uh, right now the three years has been lapsed. Four years is uh, already there, more there for uh, ONM of uh, Bharat Net project which we did earlier. Yes, there is in the pipeline as we know that Parliament has. Uh, just passed the Bharat Net project and uh, sanctioned the amount, uh, and we are expecting that the tender will start coming from December, January. Uh, we are going to be one of the prominent players to go for the tender, especially in our strategic state. Apart from that, yes, uh, we are looking forward for some of the common project, which is another pipeline, and uh, most probably some will come in quarter three, some will come in quarter four. So yes, uh, we have the capabilities and we are looking forward to take big projects uh, for the government projects also and uh, Bharat Net projects also. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Madhu Rati from counter clinical investment please go ahead thank you for the opportunity sir sir we had uh, guided that uh, going forward 50 percent of our uh, subscribers will be from organic uh, acquisition organic base and 50 percent will be through acquisitions so if you could highlight uh, the strategy that we are following as well as what kind of valuation are we looking when we are going for acquisitions as well as at what rate have we acquired metro cash? Like what multiple have we acquired metro cash? Um, metro cash already we have uh, given the figure in all uh, in the table to the public and uh, uh, already given the subscribers which we have gained. Uh, you you can see that in the uh, the series of level which we posted. So from there you can calculate what is the uh, per subscriber base numbers we have given over there. Uh, right now, yes, the strategy is the same. That we will go for the consideration of uh, industry, which uh, Mr. Jadeja is also mentioning that uh, we are going to consolidate the industry and uh, uh, give the layering because do the layering of the services also. Uh, both the cases, both the cases. Uh, Yes, uh, the strategy is safe. This quarter we have not had any acquisitions yet, but the acquisitions are in the pipeline. Already uh, we have created uh, one big metro cast as an acquisition in the first as well. And uh, we are looking forward for the next two quarters also to do the big acquisitions. Yes, organic is uh, always for continuing effort on the organic side, which is going on. So, the strategy is safe, but we have not seen the strategy level, and we are working towards that only. Okay. And sir, the multiples that we will give for the acquisition will be similar to the metro card that we have given, or uh, it will be uh, like in those ranges? Also? No, it, it depends on the scale and uh, the market which uh, the entity is on, the, uh, the target is uh, uh, working on. 
It actually varies market to market. So. Oh, okay, sir. So can you just uh, like quantify what will be the minimum IRR or the ROG that we will expect from this kind of investment going forward? Minimum is uh, IRR. If you talk about, we look forward that it is going to be more than the cost of capital, which is somewhere around 14 percent. So we look forward that IRR should be more than 14 percent when we invest in this. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, sir. My next question is. Sir, uh, so GE, we have seen a 90,000 subscriber base. So, is this a profitable business for us right now, or uh, it will, as the subscribers grow, will uh, see profitability coming in? Not much profitable, you can say, but yeah, it is. Uh, it is right now what we are seeing that uh, we are not uh, incurring any losses on this business. Whatever the what the, whatever you have to keep your OTT partner, we are giving it. That's whatever operational cost is there and breaking it. And we are making very small margin right now. But yes, as I say that we are reaching the whole whole thing and coming up with the more attractive uh, prices and more attractive packages on this and relaunching it. So that's, that's, that's going to give us. But yes, uh, there's no loss in uh, this whole business. It's more of a profit, but very small, very small margin. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, so, so, like the margin that we are guiding, 20%, but what kind of subscriber base can we achieve that 20% EBITDA margin? We are looking forward to close uh, subscriber base up around 10 million by this financial year. That's the target on which we are working. For uh, and uh, in the broadband side, we are looking forward for around uh, somewhere between uh, 1.05 million to 1.07 million. Okay, so between 1.05 to 1.07, we could achieve a 20 percent EBITDA margin going forward. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, that was very helpful and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Mehta from Mirzar Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. So, uh, firstly, there's a new concept of uh, LAN sports where uh, people playing online games stream their videos and performance over the web. Uh, this is more like a social media handle where good videos attract a lot of viewership. So, do we have any plans to enter into LAN sports and what's the opportunity size in this? Uh, also, what's the business model that could be employed in this to create a new robust uh, revenue stream? Uh, right now, we don't have any plan on this uh, current. Yes, we are going to introduce uh, gaming as we are talking about the layering of the business. But that is going to be with some with our partners like we are doing it for the OTT. And we are going to play on the margins like we are playing on the OTT. But uh, this type of product is still we have not considered in our uh, stable firm. Uh, yeah, actually, okay. I mean, such ideas had, did come to us before earlier, but we have not yet considered or tried to go with, go ahead with it. But if 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 it, I mean, in the future maybe we might. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, but sir, uh, just wanted to understand, uh, like, uh, we have seen that cable business is a, a very stagnant business. Broadband is the new uh, leg of growth that uh, I think uh, would, be, would be there in the media industry. So, uh, don't you think uh, having this kind of uh, uh, diversification in the uh, broadband business itself will uh, create a new revenue stream? Uh Current first, I, I, I disagree with you that the cable business is not a growing business. Uh, we are looking forward that we will grow in the cable as a cable company. I'm not talking about the industry. Industry might be stable. But yes, as a company, as we are consolidating and we have a lot of opportunities to grow as around 45 million subscriber base is with the smaller MSOs, which is up for the ground. Plus, uh, the TV industry, or you can say the whole cable and satellite industry is growing, is still growing at the, or TV is growing at the rate of 1.68% CAGR. Still 100 to 150 million subscriber base is not having TV in the homes are not having TV in the country. So still, you look forward that cable business is a growing business and 
You can look at in our numbers also that our subscription revenue in the cable and the numbers are still growing. Yes, the second thing which is coming on the broadband, you are right that uh, broadband is more of a like a sunrise, as I said earlier in this call only, that it's more of a like a startup business and uh, it's a sunrise uh, sector. So a lot of growth, more growth, rate of growth is going to be higher in this. And you're right that uh, this type of product, which is more of uh, innovative products and uh, going to attract more and more young people and uh, the social media fringe. So yes, we should consider this at all. Uh, so thanks, thanks a lot for bringing it to us. We'll, we'll see that what uh, innovative product we can introduce. Uh, okay, uh, sir. Just one uh, related question. So, uh, Reliance has uh, initiated Rise program, which is Reliance Initiative for Sports and enter uh, Entertainment, which has acquired IPR for stream streaming online games. So, uh, now being a Reliance Group company, what could be the potential benefit uh, that we can ga gain from this? Uh, see, right now we have not talked about uh, the content sharing with. Uh, uh, with our foreign company, uh, we have to talk about those strategies and all. We are more focusing on our uh, cable and broadband business and how we are going to layer the more and more services above that. Uh, that is that is more of yes. Uh, uh, content sharing we have to see because a lot of things comes into play on that. That whether they can share this with their subsidiaries or their. Associates are not so all those all those clauses come to the board, but yes, we have not explored that right now. Okay, uh, sir, just one last question: uh, What are our expansion plans uh, for this fiscal uh, in both uh, cable as well as broadband business? This and next fiscal uh, expansion, you can say that uh, already we are at 22 states. Uh, we are looking forward to go for uh, one more state and two more UP. So somewhere that uh, we are going to consider in this uh, next two quarters. Uh, a little bit plan is there and we are working towards that. Uh, in the broadband side, yes, uh, uh, main focus or the main expansion part is going to be from the B2B. Uh, already we are covering some of the states. Uh, slowly we have to cover all the 22 26 states where we are present in the cable. And we are working towards that. Uh, what's our presence right now in the broadband? Uh, how many states? Uh, right now, if you talk about, we are present in around nine states, which I have given you in my presentation also. If you see uh, uh, the first slide of my presentation, investor presentation, we will get our presence in the table and broadband both. Nine which states. states. Yeah, which states we are right now. Okay, okay. Uh, fine, fine, fine. Uh, fine, that was very helpful, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ketan Nathavale from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, can you please reiterate your guidance for FY24, 25, and 26 on consolidated basis? Um. Ketan, right now I can just say that we are looking forward to come back to our uh, growth area, which is, uh, if you see, total revenue was somewhere between 80 to 28 percent, and the same was growing in the range of 80 to 20 percent in the case of CATV and around 15 to 16 percent in the case of uh, broadband. So that's, that's what we are looking forward for the next two years also. Uh, EBITDA growth uh, was in the range of somewhere around 12 to 13 percent, which we are looking forward that will maintain that. Uh, this quarter we did around 7 percent uh, uh, growth in the from 125 crore to 125 crore. We look forward that uh, uh, somewhere uh, we will maintain that uh, CAGR, which we did over the years in the EBITDA side. Uh, Subscriber base and all, yes, in the next two years, as I say that we are going to cross around 10 million this year. We look forward to have a million, million more subscriber base in the next two years in the cable side. And uh, in the broadband side, to have said that we are going to cross 10.05 million uh, or 
Thank you once again. Have a good day.